we all doing tonight? How you doing? All right, all right. Meantime, my name is Brandon Lubin. You'll be seeing more of me later tonight, but on behalf of my good friend Nick Murray, <laughs> we'll be uh, doing a dual piece um, entitled The Clearing. Um, we both had the opportunity to partner up with a, not a local band, a band from down south, a little bit, an hour from here, called The Anchor Collective. They asked me and Nick to be a part of the project. And this is what this is what came about, so Sons of God, mankind and all of creation. We are all in conceptual relation as we were breathed and conceived by the mere thought and articulation of the omniscient omnipotence, omnipresence, and immutable, irrefutable king of kings. He who does according to what he pleases, but ceases to act in opposition to justice, he just is. Behold, he who exists outside of existence, whose divine and glorious presence eludes being measured by time or distance, the one who brought forth the reality of darkness and light, day and night, extensive vocabulary and imagery are not but finite insight. Listen, each man that has ever lived was merely a few trillion words short of even scratching the surface of this description, merely mirroring our incapability of divine cognitive competency, he's wonderful. And before there was such a thing as to be absent of the flesh, we were present with God. But lost the privilege of being bound in fellowship with Yahweh due to an adopted idea of Satan's conspiracies and theories. And based on a premise, we were unjustifiably blemished with disobedience as product of iniquities. But let us make mention of God's pension. The Lord God had a blueprint for creation's fall and redemption. Allow oneself to wrap one's mind around how the Son laid his life down so that sinners can be regenerated and consecrated, you see. God's relentless love was met by mankind's relentless sin. And God did not condescend, but instead sent his son to lend a hand to all men who would soon face the inevitable doom of their incapability of abiding by God's law. The Lord Jesus Christ's intervention made it possible for many to be counted worthy. It enabled his elect to circumvent the consequence of sin. And as he ascended and sent down his Holy Spirit, it's collectively the anchor to mankind's connection into divinity. The power of sin no longer has hold nor limits me. So, oh, how we await the day when Christ comes back for his bride, blessed with eternal riches, eternal life, and bodies that are glorified. Even then, with the rewards placed upon us, as God says, well done, nothing comes close into comparison to the restored fellowship we once lost with the Father's Son. Wow. Oh, how he loves. Strike those words into interrogative pose. Oh, how he loves, I mean, how does he? That kind of thinking is a teenage brat at the DMV of the human mind licensed by its condition. A menace on the road of life running red lights. Consider what runs red from his wrists, what he risked, shedding blood to shed light. The honor of his tween mom. Crappy friends like Iscariot, the Boanerges. Thomas asking all them questions, and Peter, whose sword Mike Tyson's teeth ain't got nothing on. Teenage brat thinking, running red lights. Consider this, a king was wronged. A king whose whims created solar systems, whose caprices carved canyons like the furrows lashes carved in his back. This king stopped and considered us, us broken and broken boasters, all young rich rulers, old widows, whose tides made the millions of those young rich rulers look minuscule next to the mites they dropped in the offering bin. Even the scribes, Nicodemus spoke with the Son of Man, so there's hope for know-it-alls, this king. Consider this. He died a death that rescued us from the death we sentenced ourselves to. A death that delivered us from a house encompassing everything from six seconds to 140 characters to 70 times seven eternities. No more are we natives to the wasteland. 
No, we are fully fledged travelers on a sojourn to Zion. No more will our furnace hearts consume the tinder of the best this world has to offer, derailing our locomotive bodies and flinging us out into open air to free fall our way to disaster. No, we are airplanes with no cruising altitude, discomfort our constant. Take us to where the air is thinner so that we have no choice but to breathe in the everlasting breath of God. Draw us home.